Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Oshkosh 2017 was a stunning success. Senate may stall on FAA reauthorization bill until September. Continental Motors obtains e type certificate for CD300 Diesel V6. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's August 2nd, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In no uncertain terms, Oshkosh 2017 was won for the record books, both for the superior numbers and records broken, as well as the intensely good vibes experienced by one and all. A&N's Jim Campbell reports that Oshkosh 2017 was his 45th Oshkosh and one of the best he's seen. Still, the official reports and numbers are impressive. Approximately 590,000 attended this year, an increase of 5% over 2016. More than 10,000 aircraft arrived at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh and other airports in East Central Wisconsin. At Whitman Field alone, there were 17,223 aircraft operations in the 10-day period from July 21st through 30th, which is an average of approximately 123 takeoff landings per hour. There were 2,991 show planes, up 5% over 2016, with 1,107 home-built aircraft, 1,162 vintage airplanes, 351 warbirds, 168 ultralights and light sport aircraft, 79 seaplanes, 54 rotorcraft, 60 aerobatic aircraft, and 10 hot air balloons. EAA boss Jack Pelton noted, quote, What an incredible year it was at Oshkosh. From the U.S. Navy Blue Angels and Apollo reunion to new aviation innovations on display and two B-29s flying formation as part of the 75 years of bombers on parade. It was a week filled with only at Oshkosh moments. You could feel the energy as thousands of airplanes arrived early and stayed longer, pushing aircraft camping to capacity for most of the event. The aviators and enthusiasts who attended were engaged, eager, and passionate demonstrating how Oshkosh is the best example of why general aviation is so vitally important to the country. I believe it's the best air venture week that I've ever seen. The U.S. Senate is pushing debate and a vote on the FAA reauthorization bill until after the August recess, which would have the body considering the measure in the same month that it's set to expire. The Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Chair John Thune said that there may be other legislative priorities for the Senate and that FAA might get pushed and if it does, we'll deal with it in September. The House version is also in something of a holding pattern and there is now concern that Congress will not have enough time to finish the bills and reconcile their differences before the funding runs out September 30th. The Senate version would expand the kind of training that could be included towards the 1,500-hour rule for pilot training before becoming an airline captain. On the House side, there is the thorny issue of ATC privatization. House Transportation Committee Chair Bill Schuster recently said that the FAA bill might not be on the floor until September, but that he is committed to finishing the bill before the deadline and avoiding another continuing resolution to fund the agency. After the break, Continental earns another TC. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. 
Welcome back. EASA has granted type certification to Continental Motors Group for the 300 HP V6 diesel piston engine CD300. This is the sixth jet fuel aircraft engine that Continental has certified. The TC was obtained under the requirements of EASA in Cologne and was issued on June 20, 2017 with the TC EASA E104. The CD300 series engine has a 3-liter displacement and generates 300 horsepower at a low 2,340 propeller RPM, offering low noise levels. The CD300 comes with true single lever control and a dual fully redundant electronic engine and propeller management system. Additionally, common rail technology, direct injection, twin turbocharging, liquid cooling, and an advanced reduction gear system complete the state-of-the-art design features of the new engine and clearly demonstrate Continental's leadership in new technology applied to general aviation. The type certification was conducted under the requirements of EASA and validations by the FAA and CAAC will soon follow. The CD300 is available to aircraft manufacturers and STC houses and the first applications are expected for the beginning of 2018. After these messages, TSA Security Theater continues. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The TSA is implementing new, stronger screening procedures for carry-on items that require travelers to place all electronics larger than a cell phone in bins for x-ray screening in standard lanes. Following extensive testing and successful pilots at 10 airports, TSA plans to expand these measures to all U.S. airports during the weeks and months ahead. Expect lines to get even longer as security theater gets more and more bizarre. Hillwood Airways has announced that it has received certification from the FAA as the nation's newest Part 121 supplemental air carrier which authorizes the company to market and provide passenger and cargo charter air transportation services worldwide. Caribbean Flying Adventures reports that U.S. experimental aircraft now have the green light to apply to Cuba for landing permits. You need to submit a copy of your registration, airworthiness certificate, insurance binder showing liability coverage for worldwide Western Hemisphere, islands of the Caribbean or West Indies, or Cuba specifically, plus your latest annual inspection sign-off, plus some other required details about your trip and persons on board. Australian drone pilots who fly less than 100 meters over a migrating well could face large fines and jail time under new regulations that go into effect August 25th. The legislation is aimed at protecting the massive marine mammals from any disturbance. Drones will be limited to a 100-meter floor and 122-meter ceiling under the law. When China Airlines received a 7th A350XWB, the carrier took possession of the 100th jetliner delivered from this newest family in Airbus's industry-leading widebody product line. The milestone aircraft is an A350-900 version, joining China Airlines' growing A350XWB fleet. Adding to the lineup of wide-body A330s and A340s flown by the longtime Airbus customer, which is based in Taiwan. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
One year after unveiling a cabin mock-up of a single-engine turboprop at AirVenture, Textron is reporting significant progress in bringing the Cessna Denali to market. Manufacturing of the first full airframe test article has begun and the team has started building tooling for production. This will be the first airplane in its class to offer a full authority digital engine control equipped engine, which will ease pilot workload, and that's just one of the features that will make the Cessna Denali a best-in-class aircraft, said Brad Thress, Senior Vice President of Engineering. Thress said airframe design for the Cessna Denali is nearing completion and the engineering team has started to release the drawings to continue assembly of test articles and prototypes as well as detailed tooling, floor assembly fixtures and assembly bond fixtures. The program has started fabrication of the first full airframe test article to be used for static and fatigue testing. Additional test articles have been completed and initiated testing including the fuel system iron bird test article and cabin and cargo door test articles. The program is targeted to achieve a first flight in 2018. Robinson Helicopter has received FAA certification for its R66 turbine news copter. The turnkey ready R66 electronic news gathering helicopter is powered by the Rolls-Royce RR300 turbine engine and delivers greater capacity and increased altitude performance. The standard R66 ENG package includes a 5-axis gyro-stabilized gimbal that houses an iGAMI HD camera and Canon's 22-to-1 HD lens. For tighter coverage, an optional gimbal that accommodates the camera and Canon's 40-to-1 lens is available. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is trained daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.